Welcome to my tennis coaching and it is World Mental Health Day today and I want to discuss the issue around mental health, especially within tennis coaching. Tennis coaching is quite a lonely job because generally speaking, you're on your own, you're either working with juniors or you're working with players who aren't your friends, they're, they're clients, it's business. If you work within a coaching team, you generally work in a team of a bunch of self-employed coaches, more often than not, who are all rivals in many different eyes, whether that's right or wrong. And it's it's really lonely. And you might be a head coach at a club and you have no coaching team and it's just you. That's really tough from a mental health point of view straight away because... You've got no one to share problems with. You've got no one to share ideas with. You've got no one to collaborate. You've got no one just to have a chat with and pick you up if you're having a bad day. And it's something that we don't talk about a lot within tennis. And I thought it would be appropriate today to talk about it with it being World Mental Health Day. And as a tennis coach, I've been doing this 24 years. I've had mental health issues because of my work. I've had depression because of my work. I've had anxiety because of my work. I've had to take time away from tennis because of my work. And some of the reasons I've mentioned, it is quite a lonely sp- job. It's a lonely sport. Like, there's no one to share ideas with. There's no one to share problems with. There's then the issue of the job itself when you're on court. Like, what we fail to see, and what most people fail to see, unless you're a tennis coach, it's a performance. You walk on court. You are the star of the show because you are the coach. People are looking at you for guidance. They're looking at you for support. They're looking for you to lead. It has to be a performance in terms of your presentation skills and your communication, how you present yourself. There's nowhere to hide. And that's tough. If you're doing 20 to 30, possibly 40 hours a week on court, that's physically and mentally quite draining. There's a reason if you're an actor or actress and you work on the West End or Broadway, you don't work every night of the week. You have nights off because it's draining mentally. It's not great for your mental health. But tennis coaches, because we generally are self-employed, we try and fit in as many hours as possible to try and get as much income as possible, especially in the UK. Like, at the moment, at the time recording, it's raining outside. So, like, if I don't work, I don't get paid. So I continually put myself into positions where I have to work. That has a massive effect. And I've done a couple of videos on this before. Like, you need to have a break. The amount of tennis coaches who work seven days a week, it, it's not healthy. Like, I'm quite fortunate now where, generally speaking, I have one full day off a week. Possibly two, generally on a Saturday and Sunday. But I know most coaches, when you first start, like, you have to work Saturday and Sunday all day. And then you work bit bit parts of Monday to Friday because you probably don't get full days. We never have time off. You never have time to get away from tennis. And that brings me on to the next thing, which is really tough within tennis. Mobile phones laptops macbooks like we are constantly on devices now whether that be social media emails whatsapp text messages we're constantly being communicated with from clubs uh, coaches players parents other coaches on social media like we never get a break from it and you'll notice that a few times within my social media i'll take breaks like there's times where i'll take a week off where i don't post or even this week, I took Monday off social media completely because I'm pretty burnt out at this point. I've been working hard. I've been pushing hard with a lot of content and media and stuff like that. So I know when I'm burnt out, I just take breaks. And I do that for my own mental health because if I keep pushing it and keep burning the candle at both ends, even with social media, it, it gets to me. And it, this week's been a tough week mentally because I'm quite tired now. I've been running hard for the past four or five weeks. And you may think, oh, only four or five weeks. But when you see the amount of work that I do, the amount of work I get through, it has an effect. And again, we don't talk about it. Tennis coaches don't talk about it. And it's it's one of those things like, and again, this will be quite vulnerable now, but I don't mind being vulnerable if it helps someone. What happens at the end of the day, you end up taking time off and you end up canceling sessions. And it makes it worse because one, we don't get paid if we cancel, but we need time off. Two, we don't like letting people down. And like even sort of recently, I had to cancel a lesson because mentally I was just, I was done. I was tired. So I canceled a lesson. And again, rather than being honest, like you just say, oh, I'm sick. 
I get, which is true to be fair I am mentally probably a little bit ill at that day like I just need I need a day off I need just to not to think about tennis or how to fix your forehand from an ecological point of view but you feel bad you let people down and then people think you're unreliable then as well or you believe people think you're unreliable and that also then causes an effect on you as well and these type of things we don't talk about and it's to be honest, one of the main reasons why I set up MyTennisCoaching.com and I now have the My Tennis Coach Academy and inside the academy we have a community and I'm trying to get coaches to network, to share, but not just share drills and share ideas and look how great I am. You can go on Instagram for that. But like to share challenges and say, oh, you know what, I'm really struggling with this player, can anyone help? And not be worried about what people think. And that's half the battle sometimes, especially in our industry. Like I mentioned before, we have a work on our own. If you don't have any friends, we have a work in a team who we see as rivals or they see us as a rival. So if we are struggling with a player or we're struggling with a parent or we're struggling because we're totally burnt out, we're scared to talk to someone. And I don't think that's healthy. And I don't think enough national governing bodies are doing enough around this area. And I thought that's what I'm going to talk about today because it is World Mental Health Day. Because we live and we do a job that's so mentally draining. And we don't get the respect. Because if I say to any of my friends or family what I do for a living, they think it's a bit of a joke. <laughs> tennis coaching, dead simple, it's dead easy. But there's nowhere to hide in tennis coaching. If I'm having a bad day, I can't hide it. I have to put a mask on and a front and I go on court. And that's not healthy. Like you, you, you put a front on, you go on court and you almost become a character. And you... Like I wouldn't say you lose sense of reality, but you, you mask it all and you and you push all the the negative feelings away. That's not good. Like, wouldn't it be great in the world where I could just phone up another coach and say, Listen, I'm struggling today a bit mentally, could you cover my sessions? Yeah, no problem. Without any worry or fear of sort of repercussions. So a little bit different a video today and I understand it is a bit of a heavy topic, but I think it's quite an important one. And it's the same like with coaching comments and stuff like that I, I love debates and stuff but i think when people start getting quite personal with them like it doesn't bother me but it will bother someone else and i know i've got to be better at that as well because i know i've had a go at some coaches and i put out some posts where five lies that tennis coaches tell and i think i've got to be careful with that stuff as well and you probably will see a shift in some of the content it's more about what i do and what i have found out and what i've explored less about what bad tennis coaches do and again part of that is well i don't want to make anyone feel bad and coaches only know what they know right like they do the best they can it's a very difficult job and i think sometimes i get so passionate around my way and i can't understand why coaches don't buy into ecological dynamics because it just makes logical sense and i did a podcast which you'll sort of see next week or next friday video podcast on my challenges when i start going this way and it's not all roses and it's not all easy so if you are struggling with your mental health don't suffer in silence speak to someone even if it's a case of just pick up the phone and send me a dm at my tennis coaching on instagram and i've been i say fortunate enough before in the past where people have reached out to me who are having a bad time and they just wanted someone to talk to and I think we need more of this within tennis and less about you're my rival and I don't want to give my secrets away and I don't want to share ideas because I'm scared of what people say. And if you are looking to join a like-minded tennis community, head over to mytenniscoaching.com. So let me know. Watch the next video on the screen. Check out mytenniscoaching.com and yeah, speak to each other, help each other out and be there for each other. Speak to you soon.